Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, I know it's been a while, probably about a month since I last posted, but during that time I've been been waiting for some parts to arrive. Uh, something about supply chain issues. I'm getting tired of hearing it, but you know what, it's a fact. And uh, so, you know, we've got all of these fittings here, and they took quite a while to arrive. Either way, we're ready to go. Today, we're going to be working on the intake manifold. We're going to install that MP boosted intake manifold that I showed you last time. Going to do some major modifications to the coolant system that runs underneath it, add an inline thermostat, and then to top it all off, we're putting on an 80 millimeter Bosch E throttle. Stick around. So before we get into the nitty gritty of this whole video, I'm just going to put out a disclaimer. Um, for anyone out there who doesn't really like the technical side of modifying their car, you'll probably get bored watching this. There's a lot of talk of different fittings and threads, diameters, all that stuff. Um, but if you're someone like me who really wants to take their car modification to the next level, stay tuned, uh, watch this video, ask me any questions you have, it, it's going to be pretty interesting. So if you haven't already, please check out the last couple videos I posted up. Uh, one of them explains how the stock manifold system, coolant system, all that works on the S14. And that, that's kind of a great building block if you're a little unsure of what you're doing when you're modifying one of these, uh, one of these cars. It kind of helps, it, it plays into how I'm going to install the MP boosted intake manifold. Uh, there's several modifications that are going to need to be made. And uh, while I'm doing it, I kind of want to optimize the coolant system anyways. So let's get to it. Okay, so the last time we left off, we had just stripped off the stock intake manifold and we were test fitting the NP boosted manifold onto it. Pulled off that thermostat housing that was there and all of the coolant hoses that were underneath the intake manifold. Um, at the time we didn't have the Koyo rad in there, but it's back in now. We've got the Mishimoto um, coolant hoses that run out from it because we're going to be we're going to be doing some work with this one here, so we'll need it in the engine bay. Uh, but we'll just, we'll tuck it to the side and uh, we'll go over to the parts here that we're going to be using. So the first one is obviously the MP boosted intake manifold itself. Like I said, check out the last video. It goes over all of the stuff that you need to know about this um, and how it fits in the system. Now, one of the things that I do need to mention, um, can't remember if I had this on last time, but we've got the idle air control valve. It's blocked off. Uh, with the electronic throttle that I'm putting on, I'm not going to need this. So I just uh, I used a gasket there for it and uh, bolted that down. But over here, we've got the vacuum ports. And I want you to take note of this large one here. It has the same threads as... Let's just flip that up there. It has the same threads as the idle air control valve, which is also the same threads as right down here. And this, uh, this hole right here is the coolant bypass that we talked about in that previous video. So it comes right from there. Now, MP Boosted provided a couple fittings. And what I did was using one of these uh, thread gauge kits, tested it out. And what we found was it was the 5 16th, right there, 5 16th, and 20 threads per inch, which is, a dash five fitting now took us a hell of a long time to find dash five fittings because that is not a common size that you use uh, but what i ended up finding was eventually from one of the industrial suppliers here in uh, in calgary i got a dash five orb that goes to a dash six jic which is the same as dash six an so anyways i've got Two of those that I'm going to use on the system, as well as another Dash 5 ORB, and this is a plug. Um, it's going to be used to plug that idle air control valve uh, bypass. Uh, the other parts I got, we've got the actual Bosch 80 millimeter throttle body that came in. We've got, and I'll link, up, I'll link up where I found all these in the description afterwards, but we've got an inline thermostat. It's got threaded inside here in these holes is dash 16 on both sides. The outer diameter is one, uh, yet one and a half inches. And then the coolant bypass is half inch NPT. 
Uh, inside you can see the actual thermostat itself. This sucker is going to be mounted down in the engine bay here and it's going to be coming off of this large hose. So we needed a half inch NPT to dash six AN. That's going to go right on to there. What else do we have? We have here a dash 16 ORB. A little hard to see since it's all black, but dash 16 ORB and dash 16 AN. That's going to go on to one side of that, uh, that thermostat there. We've got a 45 degree bend for the dash 16. And then here we have from, well, it's upside down, but Tarx ordered it from EFI Solutions. This here adapts onto the engine itself where the thermostat housing usually would sit. So that's how we're adapting this whole system to dash 16. Uh, I also ordered in a GK Tech coolant spacer. That is going to actually go right that's never a good sound. It's going to go right over there in between this water neck and the cylinder head. And the reason I'm doing that is because on here, let's just spin that around. There is actually a threaded fitting, an MPT fitting to put the coolant sensor on. Now, because I eliminated the stock, the stock thermostat housing in that entire system, I have lost access to where the where the coolant uh, temperature sensors used to sit. So I need to find a new spot to put them. And this here was the best solution. Okay, so beyond that, uh, what else do we have left? Oh yeah, uh, one of the important ones. This MP boosted manifold, well, it came with a throttle body, but it's a cable throttle body, and I didn't like that. I'm going with electronics, so I needed to get from Superforma an adapter plate that's actually made for this manifold. Now they don't market it as MP boosted. It was under a different name because there's a couple companies, uh, a couple out there that have used this exact same manifold. It's one of the eBay specials. You know, it's manufactured over in China. Several companies are going to put their names on it. That's okay. Once again, not a bad product, but either way we needed to adapt it. So picked up that throttle body adapter and that's going to fit the throttle body right onto it. Anyways, that's the boring part. I've gone over the parts that you're going to need. Now we're going to get down to actually fitting it. So the first thing we'll put on is the inline thermostat. So we're going to get this Tarx dash 16 and fitting onto there. It's got a gasket on the backside, so we don't have to worry about that. And it actually came with, uh, with these stainless bolts provided the um, M what are these M eight bolts. The inline thermostat here, I've already got the, the half inch MPT to dash 6AN that's threaded in there. The dash 16 ORB is threaded on and the 45 degree angle. So I'm going to throw this onto the car so you can see how it all goes together. So we've got that Tarx piece mounted onto there. And what's going to happen is we're going to take this inline thermostat, the dash, dash 16, uh, fitting here and that's going to get threaded on and what we'll have is an inline thermostat sitting right above the alternator. Now I've already done some test fitting and I know that the NP boosted manifold is going to sit above it and got about eh, probably an inch of play in here. So once everything's fastened down, this is going to fit perfectly. Okay. So we've got the inline thermostat threaded on to there now. And just to give an idea of how this is going to work, we've got our coolant bypass system. This is going to be one of the hose ends that comes off of it. And, uh, and that's actually fed from here. So there's going to be on that MP boost manifold. There's the threaded fitting dash six AN. We're going to have a hose coming right off of it and going right into this 90 degree bend. So that coolant bypass that we're putting on there, what that's for is to make sure that the thermostat in here actually gets up to temperature properly. So when you start up the engine, you're going to have the coolant flowing through it, but because the thermostat's not open, there is no flow going through this hose at that time, which means there's also no flow going through this hose. Uh, so in order for that thermostat to get up to temperature, well, we still need the coolant to flow into the system. So it comes through the bypass there. It's nice and hot from the engine comes into here, 
heats up that thermostat, and then when it gets to the right temperature, boom, opens up, and we now have flow through the radiator. Next thing we had to do was get all the fittings onto the intake manifold. So this is once again the Dash 5 ORB to Dash 6 AN. Uh, this big one here, this is actually going to be for the, the brake booster over here. Now I'm not going to be using this hose, I'm going to go to uh, something nicer and well that's why I went to a Dash 6 because now I can put any fitting I want onto there. Haven't figured out what I'm going to do for these smaller uh, MPT fittings, uh, but you know, those, those are pretty simple ones. Those are just going to be NPT to hose barb, very easy to find, and there were some provided with the intake manifold as well, so I might even just use the ones that came with it. I've got the idle air control valve blocked off, once again, Dash 5 ORB. And down here, we use that same fitting to the Dash 6. So this 45 degree fitting clears that manifold perfectly. And that's going to be the hose that goes to the um, down here into this hose end for the bypass. So, anyways, let's uh, we're going to get this onto the car and and see how this whole system fits together. Got that intake manifold on. The adapter is in place. Uh, right down in here, we've got that inline thermostat. And we've got just enough clearance. Well, it's still a good amount. It's kind of hard to see down here, but we've got some good clearance there. Um, we're going to have to modify this hose to fit onto that, uh, but that won't be too bad. And the other thing that I had to keep in mind when I was designing this was that the alternator belt that's right here needs to clear this. So that's another reason why, I mean, I could have gone with maybe a 90 degree bend and had a bit more space not to have to worry about this clearance issue. Um, but the risk was in doing that, it would then be hitting this belt. So went with the 45 instead, that gives space for this hose to still fit on kind of in its stock position. Uh, not, not exact, but pretty close. I think I'm going to have to shave off about two inches from this hose to make it fit. Um, and not to mention the fact that this is one and three eighths inch, that's the stock size, and this is one and a half inch. So I'm going to be lubing this thing up with some silicone spray and, uh, and squeezing it over this and then clamping it down really well. Um, I'm sure some people out there are going to tell me you should probably be using an adapter, but I've had enough trouble just finding all these fittings. I, if I find it's popping off or I'm having any issues, I'll change it in the future, but for now, um, I already did a test where I um, expanded this and slipped it over and it worked just fine. So the other thing we need to look at, we've got down here the hose that's going to bypass into that dash six right there. One last detail that I should add, down in here you can kind of see those uh, hose barbs down there or nipples, whatever you want to call them, from the original coolant system. I'm going to be blocking those off. Uh, as you can see, this isn't completely bolted down. It's still just a test fit. But those down there are going to get blocked off, so I'm going to order some silicone um, plugs, I guess you could call them, from HPS, and put those over that. So anyways, let's, uh, let's move on to the throttle body. Okay, and we have here the electronic throttle, the Bosch 80 millimeter throttle mounted onto the intake manifold. That is a huge, huge inlet on it. Anyways, the, the space is still pretty good down here. Like you can see, there's some good clearance. Once everything is, I mean, this isn't completely tight yet, but once it is completely tightened down, that thing is not going to be moving. This hose will also help hold it in place. I'm not too worried about it rubbing up against anything. The throttle has plenty of space around it. So last thing to do, I'm going to, now that I've got that on, going to take this intake manifold back off, cut this hose, get it to fit onto that thermostat, and uh, and then just finish off the, the coolant bypass hose. Oh, one other one other quick thing to mention too, um, between the adapter plate and the intake manifold, there was no gasket provided for that, so I'm also going to be cutting my own. So just something, if, if you decide to go down the same path as me, uh, just make sure you have some sort of gasket there or you're gonna have some boost leaks. 
So I got the intake manifold back off and we've got the Mishimoto hose onto the inline thermostat. Now I had to trim off about, oh, let's see, probably about inch and a quarter. I think it was about 30 mils in the end that I trimmed off. And, uh, and it fits, it fits pretty well. Like I said, I'm going to be clamping that down. There's a bit of a gap here. I'll push it up snug, get a nice, uh, nice hose clamp onto there. And that is, uh, except for this last hose here, the last piece needed to finish off the manifold system over here. So the last thing we got now is the GK Tech coolant spacer. And we're going to install that right back in here. So four screws is all it takes to install the spacer down there. And uh, as you can see, it looks pretty nice and clean. I've got just, as an example here, I've just got a 1 8 MPT sensor. Um, that's, that's for the coolant right there. I've just got one sitting in there, but I'm, I'm going to be switching over to a completely different sensor, one that the Link ECU will be able to use. Uh, but just to illustrate the purpose here, um, you can see down there, there's one more bolt. It's hidden underneath here, but that's all it takes to get that installed. And, uh, and it doesn't really, doesn't really do too much to the hose. It's not too kinked from it. I'll just kind of, you know, move it around a bit, make sure it's nice and relaxed. But beyond that, works well. And I've got a little clamp, get the, the oil dipstick clamped back up there. Anyways, that is the complete system. So throw back on that intake manifold quickly so you can get one last look at what it looks like when it's all said and done. So one last time, intake manifold is back on, throttle body, got the coolant hose that goes into the Koyo Rad, upper coolant hose that goes into the water neck over there, and uh, you can kind of see the bottom of the spacer there, but we got that GK Tech spacer, 1 8 MPT fitting for our engine coolant temperature sensor, and then down below is the the dash 16 fitting from uh, Tarx, and it goes into our inline thermostat. And then hidden underneath is the bypass hose that's bringing coolant from the cylinder head into that, uh, that inline thermostat. So I have to say, when you have all the parts here and you've done all the hours of research already and all the test fittings, it looks pretty easy, but I, it took a long time. It, it took a long time to get to this point, and there's a reason it's been a month. Um, I kept ordering parts, waiting for them, test fitting, realizing it wasn't going to work. Um, trying to source out these Dash 16 fittings was a pain. And then, uh, to make matters worse, I had to order stuff from Australia just to make this work. But hey, it's all good. It looks great in the car. There's a few little things left to do. I gotta bolt that intake manifold down, torque everything down properly, and uh, apply a gasket to a couple spots there. Uh, but beyond that, the system is ready to go. So. Going to move on to the fuel rail next. Uh, I've got a new regulator that's going to be going in. The fuel rail, there's going to be some more hoses and fittings that need to be ordered for that first. Uh, but that'll be the next thing coming out. So stay tuned. There's going to be plenty more done on this car. Um, and you know, in a few months, hopefully I get this thing up and running and you'll be able to see this coolant system working. Um, I'm pretty excited. Anyways, if you enjoyed what you saw, please Give me a like, give me a subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Um, like I said, many, many hours of research goes into this all to, uh, all to put out just a 10, 20 minute video um, showing you the final product so that, you know, hopefully if you wanna do the same work to your car, well, you don't have to do all that research. I've already done it for you. Anyways, thanks for watching.